Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Dr. Igor Calzada from the University of Oxford, Principal Investigator in Replicate EU Project and Work Package Leader of Replicate, Work Package 8, Replication. Welcome. I'm pleased to have you on board today, already in the third session uh, led by light, the Lighthouse City, Florence, in Tuscany, Italy. Um, just a brief reminder. Uh, the city city learning program is the main uh, replication activity on the EU uh, replicate project uh, that you can contribute to, follow and participate through the hashtag city to city learning and replicate EU. Just in a reminder, uh, in a nutshell, the program kicked off uh, on February the 5th, led by the project leader and the Lighthouse City San Sebastian in Spain, followed by Essen, the fellow city. The former uh, focus on the smart service provision and the latter on local entrepreneurial hubs. So um, you can watch the sessions already in the in the site, uh, replicate slash, sorry, a hyphen EU slash city to city learning. So uh, since the beginning of replicate back in 2016, We've been preparing the program, the City to City Learning program, in collaboration with the three Lighthouse cities, but also uh, with the three uh, fellow follower cities. So during this time, the Lighthouse projects, as we are going to see today with Florence, uh, they've been intensively focused on the implementation of the pilots in the three sectors, energy, mobility, and city. Uh, alongside these implementations, we have been carrying out fieldwork research in the three follower fellow cities to identify their critical factors and the unique composition of stakeholders. So right now, uh, through this program, so the, through the city to city learning program, it's time to start matching how a diverse set of urban implementations could be adapted and scale up by considering the composition of stakeholders in each follower fellow city. So as a result, the fellow follower cities, uh, they will formulate the replication plan. So this program, and the main rationale behind this is that we have designed entirely this to assist both uh, follower fellow cities and lighthouse cities to find a common ground to, to further include in the replication plans of the fellow cities. So uh, today, I mean, um, it's the time for Florence. The program will last during the whole year uh, 2019. And just a practical note, the sessions has been designed to be uh, uh, private sessions, but then they are going to be uh, distributed and disseminated through open access um, in the website and you can see them. Uh, just a practical note about the, your participation. I can see that there are, to be honest, I can say that there are a lot of uh, registrations for this for this um, sessions. So congratulations to Florence because uh, it was uh, uh, a lot of uh, attraction on this on this uh, session. So just a practical note about um, your participation. When you are going to talk in the Q and I session, after each slot, please introduce yourself, your city, and the organization that you represent. So in a nutshell. Uh, brief description about Florence. Florence, the capital um, of the Italian region of Tuscany, approximately 383 inhabitants in the core city, but as in the case of Essen, the metropolitan area is relevant as it's very important to the smart city project because it's over 1 million. So we have two cases that they are very similar in this, in this sense, like Essen and, and Florence. Uh, due to its historical and cultural heritage, heritage tourism, um, is the city's most important industry, but production and commercial activities remain uh, also uh, remarkable, mainly, but especially and particularly in the greater metropolitan area. Another fact that we should keep, in, uh, keep an eye is that the city is often in the top 10 most visited cities in the world, uh, approximately having 10 million tourists uh, stay in accommodations. Uh, so as we can see, this is a challenge for a city and is why Florence is preparing uh, to tackle and to uh, face these uh, challenges, these urban challenges. Um, among many other things, what we can say is that replicate, within the context of replicate, uh, the smart city pilot that uh, Florence has been intensively and successfully working uh, has been focused on Novoli in the northwest of Florence. Um, Novoli is today an area 
with a mix public commercial residential buildings, including the social science campus at the University of uh, Florence. But better than me, I think that with the, I'm going to welcome, I'm going to um, introduce uh, the city representative of the city of Florence uh, that has been intensively working on that. Welcome and good morning, Alessandra Barbieri. Hi, Igor, welcome and uh, welcome Hello. to everybody. Very happy to be here, to have the opportunity to take part to this uh, city to city learning action. Yes. I think it's uh, a very good experience uh, to share what's going on in Florence. That is um, one of the three pilot uh, action cities working uh, in the project uh, as a lighthouse together with Bristol and uh, San Sebastian. And uh, today we are uh, all the uh, partners of uh, the Italian consortium attending all together in this room. So they, we are thinking globally, but actually locally, as uh, we are going to say. So today it's uh, together with me, we can have representatives from the um, CNR, from the University of Florence, from the uh, telecom team, organization, Thales, SPES, and um, of course, uh, Matema. Uh, our, the last two are our small medium enterprises that are taking part uh, together with uh, our uh, big companies uh, such as uh, SAID, Thales, and uh, the distribution. We have also a research center, CNR, and the University of Florence. So it's quite composite the consortium that is able to represent this uh, innovativeness that is taking place in uh, the reality, because uh, what is uh, at the basis of our action is uh, to go further from planning and going from planning to action for a better happy life for the ones that are not just uh, Staying and living in the city, but they are using the living the city because, as uh, you have said before, our main challenges is uh, the way to organize the life that the people that are attending the city around uh, more than 10 uh, millions of uh, tourism, but uh, also all the commuters that are moving in the city that are transforming daily in the city from the inhabitants around 400,000 to the real users that are around 600,000. So it's very needy to have uh, an action that is able to manage at the bad city. Good, perfect. Uh, the title of the, of, the, of the whole session, I think is very catchy when it was go fast, go green, get connected, that's smart. I think it's very clear from that you are trying to blend the sustainability but also smartness in, in, in one strategic action. So before we are going to open the floor for the first speaker, uh, I think the composition of stakeholders is very rich in this sense, it's very diverse as we are going to see. And that's the three slots uh, that we, I mean, that we have co-produced together is about the e-taxis, the first one, the second one, and the first recharge. The second one is going to be the recharge system. And the third one is going to be much more about the platform, the ICT that is managing the whole data about this. Um, so, uh, could we just uh, start with the with the first slot with um, uh, with Valerio Moscarini and Stefano uh, Riva, as you as well, uh, Alessandra? Are you ready to start yeah. with this? Yeah, Perfect. yeah, yeah. Just a very small introduce by myself that is giving in a glance what is going on about the urban mobility in Florence. That uh, this can say that our action is uh, to go further a uh, local zero emission uh, action. This is uh, very focusing uh, in uh, action related uh, all. Uh, want to each other because of course it's just uh, thanks to a combined action that we can achieve uh, the biggest results but at the basis of our zero emission policy there's e-mobility that is coming forth and uh, we can um, summarize in three in four main action the activities that are really connected to transport especially to public transport we have uh, the tramway system we have already in place the three lines for around uh, 21 kilometers and uh, we have uh, a sharing system that is based also on um, electric uh, mobility especially right now the car sharing e-car sharings 
we have uh, 600 uh, vehicles of, uh, of which 220 already electricals and we have a company that is just electrical one. That means that uh, together with the e-buses fleet and the e-taxi fleet, this uh, an action that has been developed thanks to Replicate project. We are going further to which we can call our main objectives, focusing on e taxi fleet. Let me say that we don't have a very huge number of taxis, are less than 800. And thanks to the Replicate project, we already have in place 100 um, e vehicles. And uh, this, of course, is something that is needed to give an example of a good practices because uh, together with the public fleets uh, in charge of the public administration give the right example to the people moving by the car it's a uh, good opportunity to share our idea that e-mobility is needed but to do that uh, we can uh, not just uh, have an awareness campaign, but also give uh, to the taxi drivers, because it's a work, of course, something that is enable uh, these um, new challenges of e mobility. And this is uh, why we focus on two main actions that are going to be represented by our uh, uh, colleague from uh, e-distribuzione that are also managing the two infrastructures provided on the project that are uh, super fast uh, just for uh, e-taxi drivers and of course the smart grid that is the real enabler of e-mobility. So I'm going just to give uh, the word to the colleague of uh, e-distribuzione. Uh, so let's start the presentation. This is uh, the two main activities in this project. We have uh, installed uh, new devices in uh, two primary substations and uh, 60 secondary substations for the smart grid uh, framework. And in the other framework, in the e-mobility framework, we have installed six passenger stations for taxi. Uh, as uh, Sandra said before, uh, the taxi is the a cluster uh, that the, only the taxi can use uh, the six uh, fast charge station. Well, uh, of course, uh, a distribution is the DSO, distribution system operator, and uh, is uh, uh, to perform the, the network, the electric network. Uh, of course, in Florence, uh, we, have the, we is the exclusive granting of distribution network. I said that before we um, carry out uh, in uh, if we work in two primary substations, 60 se secondary substation, and we have involved 25,000 customers and uh, over 200 uh, low voltage lines and 18 million voltage lines. In the electric mobility, we uh, we have um, installed for taxi, and these uh, technologies uh, uh, allow a faster charge. In 20 minutes, uh, the e taxi vehicles uh, is uh, can uh, go up, uh, for, uh, to work, and. Uh, we have uh, also this, um, the, our technology is uh, controlled uh, by a platform uh, we call the electric mobility management uh, and it's uh, remotely controlled. So the, we can uh, use uh, by remote control and uh, act uh, for, for example, uh, uh, reboot the infrastructure, reset anti-tamper and uh, so on. In the, uh, we have installed the sixth uh, infrastructure, uh, as you see in the map, in uh, crucial points of the city, in the station, for example, uh, train station, in the airport, uh, in many other entrances. We have registered uh, in the last two years uh, uh, over 18,000 recharges uh, and for an energy consumption of 16 uh, kilowatt per hour. And um, of course, uh, um, the, in the other framework uh, that, that I said before, the smart grid uh, framework, uh, 
it's uh, important uh, to understand the, the role of uh, the smart grid that is uh, needed to foster uh, the development of electric mobility concept and uh, optimized management. And so uh, the next chapter I explained to uh, my colleague Stefano and uh, for, the, for the last uh, presentation. Okay. Hello everybody. I present myself. I'm Buongiorno. Stefano Riva. I work in distribution in smart grid area. In particular, I work about the remote control and the automation of the grid. But uh, Valerio says before is uh, that we believe that the grid is, okay, the, the grid is a services enabler. enabler. So I mean that uh, uh, make the grid smarter is the baseline layer for uh, create uh, for the activation of the services needed to have a smart city. For example, the first driver that uh, we, we have for create a smart grid is the continuity of services. For improve this issue, we develop a new innovation uh, grid automation called SFS, Smart Fall Selection. This automation is based on a low latency communication. In this case, in Florence, we use LTE connection. Uh, with this automation, in case of fault, we can have the, uh, the, automation, the automatic selection of the fault section, the isolation of the fault, and the restoration of the supply to the remaining cost, uh, customers in less than one second. For testing this new automation, we make a controlled real fault in a section of the grid interesting in a replicate project here in Florence. The results of this test become uh, very proud because the execution time of this new automation is uh, ordered in 474 milliseconds and uh, 326 customers involved in the outages of the fault. Differently from the older protection automation system, we will we will get 2,500 customers involved in the same outages uh, with the same fault. It's a very large number for different. The second driver is uh, the connection of big loss like an uh, electric car recharging station uh, with um, faster recharging station, or uh, the distributed renewable generation in our grid. For improve this issue, we develop an advanced voltage regulation of the grid. This, uh, this algorithm, this innovative algorithm, is based on an information chain between the new smart devices that we install in uh, uh, along with our grid and our central systems. These uh, two issues are very bigger when uh, we decide to create a smart grid, but there are many, many over that permit us to create to be to be the base layer that we see before of implementing new services for customers. Okay, so so. Thank you. Is it okay, Igor? Do you have yeah, the, the, nice. any question? 
Yes, uh, I have, uh, you know, um, in addition to the technical solution of for a fast recharging before I'm going to open the floor for for questions or comments or uh, from the audience, because we have, uh, let's say, quite a big uh, audience on the other side. I have just one question. Um, uh, it's, it's clear that it's a really good practice of the PPP, the public private partnership between uh, the city of Florence and eDistribuzione as a private uh, company. Um, this action has been affecting, directly affecting to the, to the city of Florence, uh, to the metropolitan city of Florence as well, to Silvi, to Distribuzione, but also to other kind of stakeholders like uh, taxi associations, like University of Florence, the CNR, that is Academia, and also Matema. My question is, how is going to affect, or how are, how can you see that it's going to uh, see the consequences of this deployment, this technical deployment, for example, for a local uh, taxi associations? I mean, how, how have you dealt with this specific stakeholder in, in your city? Any kind of insight on that? Yeah, uh, let me say that uh, when you are talking about smart grid, it's quite hard to define and explain which are the positive impact. It's more related to the indirect effect of reinforcing the network. This is something that is uh, very close to the concept of the immaterial things uh, that are enabling uh, the opportunity and the possibility to have a real uh, deployment of innovative, because this uh, not only gives us the opportunity to have, uh, let me say, a sort of uh, um, no blackout uh, when uh, uh, talking about resilience uh, system uh, uh, could be some uh, uh, damages uh, coming from the climate changing and challenges. You know that, for instance, Florence, due to the, the unoliver, we are always uh, uh, having a special view on the resilient themes. But on the other hand, apart from the concept of resilience, let me say that you, if you want to evolve, through a real system, you should be have the infrastructure that enables the system. And this is not just going to things that are able to be looked at, such as the um, super fast recharging. But let me say that if the super fast recharging system is working uh, together with the traditional uh, uh, recharging column, is that because we have an analysis of the territories, even thanks to the uh, contribute of uh, the CNR, that it's able to say to us how much our cities is capable to have this uh, infrastructure. And capable to have this infrastructure is just because we have a potentiality close to the reinforcement of the smart grid. So it's something that is uh, close together. And it's something that is uh, taken into uh, account of not only the deployment itself, but the deployment that is uh, analyzing the territories. So it's a uh, real strategy that is putting together several hectares. And this means asking to the taxi driver, to the taxi association, to go further to the hybrid system and go to the complete 100% electric mobility because uh, thanks to the smart grid that is enabling the super fast recharge, we are able to give uh, uh, services to the taxi drivers that in uh, around 10, 20 minutes, it depends of course, uh, not only by the brand of the cars, but also of the recharge system, how, uh, let me say, the, it's needed, how recharging is needed to the car, just with the coffee, they're able to go through the territories for all the day. Okay, I see. I mean, you are you are foreseeing a positive impact among different stakeholders, even including the taxi uh, the taxi drivers themselves. I mean, you are seeing uh, as a, as a positive impact in, in consequences for uh, for a territory. Yeah, you are yeah, yeah, exactly. This okay. is a test that we are, we are doing in Florence, just to have a look. It could be enlarged to the old cities and also to the metropolitan cities and also at the national level because they are the so-called so we have the opportunity if it's working also to scale up this experience 
Yes, I think it's another thing that you have already mentioned. Now we are going to open uh, the floor for questions because I, have, I am seeing that in the chat there are some questions already. But I think it's true that Florence is trying to also showcase how the experience in Florence could be replicated among different Italian cities. So I think this is worth yeah. uh, considering the metropolitan scale because it's not just about the city, the urban level, the urban scale. Is I mean the challenges also metropolitan. So this uh, specific uh, project. Uh, the slot that you have presented, I think, is a good uh, ex, uh, practice in this sense. So, um, uh, any question on the on the audience? I can see Donato Russo. There is a question here, but uh, is there any other people that wanted to ask or comment something? Please introduce yourself before asking. Hello. 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 Speaking. Hello. Yes, Donato Russo speaking here. Sorry for, the noise. Donato. Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm actually in Florence <laughs> in the street. No, it's fine. Uh, the, noise is, I mean, the sound is perfect. So please go ahead. Great. Uh, well, my question has been uh, posed in the chat, but uh, I, I could enlarge it. I introduced myself. I am a serial startup and working in the past uh, two years on blockchain technology applied to um, to real cases uh, like um, infrastructure as an example so um, my question is um, don't you uh, don't you think that first question is don't you think that in the introduction of the smart grid uh, in the recharging areas would need uh, something around the recharging area because 20 30 minutes it's a long time to wait um, I know this because I've been working with Tesla on another project where, you know, uh, a prerequisite for Tesla to install their, uh, their rechargers, uh, it is that uh, around the rechargers, there are activities where people in the meantime, uh, they recharge mm -hmm. their car, they can in fact do other irons, do other things mm -hmm. uh, while they're recharging uh, so their vehicle. Therefore, so the question this, is, don't yeah. you think that for a smart city, the EV recharger could have could take a, a possibility, a chance, in fact, to redesign uh, a complete uh, way of living the city and using mobility around the EV station? Second question is, well, what about blockchain technology? I am working on mm -hmm. it and I know that there are a lot and of advantages for public administrations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Donato. I think that uh, some, I mean, summing up your question, I think that you are seeing like a smart grid that could be improved uh, through the cutting edge or the hope, because we don't know what's going to happen with blockchain yet, but I think that's a good question. Saying, I mean, arguing that uh, blockchain could also improve the this project what do you think uh, on the other side uh, the distribution and even alessandra um any any answer on that yes uh stefano speaking uh, i want yes. to answer to the first uh, question uh, yes i think is the is uh is is uh, is correct what did you say because it's all a uh, faster charging station of uh, 50 kilowatts is like Dense flex consumption, and uh, for install this type of uh, of, uh, of station, we mo we modify our grid. The instant grid for it can install this uh, this device, and for for um, for modify less our grid for install new new station new recharging station, we decide to install smart devices. With the new smart devices, we can modify less our grid because it permit to uh, to to install new loads and new generation on our grid in our grid using the older grid. And mm -hmm. um, what about the second question about the blockchain? Do you think that is feasible at this at this stage? Yeah, I give the floor to um, Stefan from Matema because we have been uh, analyzing the opportunity to relate to blockchain, especially to the hub that has been provided inside the project. So just a few uh, words about this uh, topic. 
Yes, hello everyone, Stefano from Matema speaking. Uh, just some words about that. Uh, first of all, we have to, to recall that uh, when the project started, the blockchain technology was not so measured to envisage yes. uh, um, some uh, um, uh, practical application. In, uh, in these years, uh, anyway, the blockchain application are uh, um, not common, but are starting to, to be present on the market. So we are uh, discussing with the uh, Municipality of Florence uh, to introduce blockchain technology, especially for uh, the um, uh, app for uh, taxi drivers, uh, uh, in order to, uh, for two points of view. The first one is uh, to make uh, taxi drivers sure that their transaction can uh, be recorded, that can be, uh, the reservation can be trusted and so on. And on the other hand, uh, to offer this uh, opportunity also to the energy provider, also in a in future perspective that the several energy providers can uh, give uh, energy to, to, to the grid. And so also in order to have second transaction, uh, both for providers and for the users. Yeah. I think that, uh, thank you uh, from Matema, I miss your name, but a uh, very interesting answer. I think that you are, we are blending a really good content because I, I think that uh, I'm, I'm going to open the floor for other, one other question on the audience, but because I, I think that we are uh, with the contribution of, um, of uh, Donato and the answer of Matema, we are coming back to my previous question that is at the end of the day blockchain could help us to set up another platform that could be much more trusted uh, from the data perspective. And is why the taxi associations are going to be benefited from this uh, hope of the blockchain technology, hopefully. Let's see if the, if the technology is going to develop as, as fast as the, our desire. But I think that uh, things are going to evolve in this direction, at least in some cities, things are, are evolving in this direction. Thank you for, uh, for the questions and the answer. Any other um, comment on? On the audience, I can see that there are a lot of people on on the audience at the moment. I can see people from Florence, from San Sebastian, yeah. uh, from 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 Turkey. Ezra is also here from Bristol. Daniel. Um, okay, let's move on to the second uh, slot uh, about the chart system to move uh, towards a sustainable community and city. So we have uh, Alessandra and also Giuseppe Carone, that is the head of e-mobility of the Office of Municipality in Florence. Please. Yes, exactly. Giuseppe is the um, manager of the e-mobility, let me say, deployment in the city and is uh, following uh, also the um, realization that are inside the rapid project. Just a few words regarding how Florence is positioned in Italy at the national level, especially for its strategy. It's uh, inside this has been agreed that uh, Florence is an example to follow for local zero emission mobility uh, because it's the result of a strategy that is taking account the reality of the city. Because uh, while I'm moving to this uh, network transport modernization, it's because uh, we can say that uh, Florence is um, the most popular and well known compact urban city in Italy. It's a representative of uh, a not very large area because we are just around uh, 100 square kilometers meters. But uh, it's uh, so used uh, because of um, the commuters, uh, the daily population, let me say, and the, um, the students. Uh, we have uh, a very large number of uh, student population related not only to the role of the University of Florence, let me say that uh, based on the result of the last uh, national survey, the University of Florence is the second university in Italy not because of the number of uh, people that are um, attending the university, but also because of the um, successful results of people that are attending this uh, 
study because uh, we are uh, more than 36% of people that are going to be degree on time. So it's uh, a number that is uh, more of the um, European average maintenance. So this is something that we have to take in account uh, together with around uh, uh, 400 million software students. So go through um, mobility is something that is needed if you want to be uh, a sustainable city. And this is uh, something that is uh, deriving also from the analysis that uh, we have uh, been done. Uh, since uh, 310, uh, we are part of uh, the um, Covenant of Mayors uh, and go through uh, then uh, Global Compact of Mayors and the Covenant of Mayors. is something that uh, we can say it's in our history. It's a sort of uh, never-ending stories, uh, sustainability in Florence. And uh, according to the emission rental baseline that uh, we have been uh, realized uh, for our sustainable energy action plan, it has been clear that mobility is the main sector affected in zero emission in um, our city. And that's why we have uh, really focusing on uh, mobility efficiency. And uh, as we have seen also from uh, the slide before, it is a of action that uh, we are doing and uh, the record of projects reflect our action in the e-mobility force uh, as um, a sort of uh, motto. So uh, it's not just uh, a taxi fleet and uh, their uh, super fast uh, recharge system adopt for them, but it's uh, in general speaking the e-charge system that has been enriched also thanks uh, to the replicate project that uh, I've been focusing on, because uh, from um, the beginning, we uh, always believe uh, that um, moving through a sustainable mobility, it's a way together with the, the national and uh, regional opinion to uh, have a sustainable uh, uh, city. And uh, that's why even thanks to regional funds, We've been able to have a, a local um, a regional strategy that is going to contribute to the reduction of uh, emissions that are deriving from uh, the road transport and uh, greenhouse gases. This is uh, just to work on the global challenges that is uh, especially imposed by COP21 and the signing of Kyoto Protocol, not only from uh, the national. Uh, Minister, but also reinforced by the adaptation from the uh, Tuscany region and uh, Florence municipality. That means that our aim, our goal, is to promote the development of the electric mobility um, close to the national uh, action plan that's uh, named PNIRE. And um, what we are going to do is to make e mobility something uh, available for all. That means that uh, in the last uh, five or seven years, we have uh, made a sort of um, uh, opportunity pocket for people to get not only aware of uh, e-mobility e-vehicles, but also get um, more confident to this uh, new system. So what we have done to improve the e-vehicles uh, circulation apart from the public transport uh, system is uh, to have a sort of opportunity given to the driver, to the inhabitants, to the city user. So for instance, free circulation and parking for e-vehicles in all the city, you know that we have um, uh, quite a huge uh, cultural heritage that is preserving the, um, the entrance of the vehicles and with uh, e uh, vehicles you are allowed to get in and uh, make uh, thanks to also the example of the e e e e municipal fleets an example to be um, affordable not only in terms of uh, economical uh, management but also of confidential and uh, security system. And uh, we had uh, for uh, two years also the opportunity to have um, free recharge points uh, just to make people use uh, to this uh, system, uh, together with uh, financial contribution for the purchase of e-vehicles. Of course, this was something that uh, was uh, decided by the municipality to make people more close to it. And this could be made possible if we not um, 
giving today the opportunity to have uh, not only free recharge uh, uh, system, but also a public multi-vendor common system that give us uh, the opportunity to uh, show people that uh, if uh, 10 years uh, ago, for instance, electromobility was seen as a future, the future is a lot. Let me say that together with NX, that will be our future partner in charge of e-mobility, we have been realizing in April the first national e-fair exhibition, and it was chosen in Florence because we are really in charge of this topic. And uh, thanks to the representative of our national uh, system, uh, Actually, we had the opportunity to have also the result in numbers, and from last from uh, 217 uh, to 218, we have the double of numbers of vehicles that are circulating in uh, at national level. This means that we can uh, uh, see three uh, conditions as to be essential to be sure to go further with this. Uh, he uses so uh, should have the opportunity to recharge and to have the opportunity to recharge means reinforce the smart grid, reinforce the infrastructure network or charging station and uh, to have a income market that is satisfied with several needs of the people. This means that uh, uh, we are working on it quite hard uh, the national state of art, then uh, we go, go further to the local one, means that Italy is the sixth in the ranking of the most electric countries in terms of number of columns, and uh, Florence could be a real representative of uh, Italy in this case. In recent years, Florence has really strongly invested, especially from 2012 until now, in uh, charging infrastructure for uh, electrical uh, vehicles, focusing this action together with the, the public transport and um, especially with the e taxis. So, there six uh, uh, super fast recharging for the e taxi drivers are just a very small part of uh, a general uh, system of uh, around 200 public multi vendor charging stations and uh, two super fast recharging available for all citizens. That means that also the taxi drivers have this just for them, but also two more of the power allowing for everyone. And this means I have a quite a huge uh, number of uh, charging systems, even thanks to Rapid Project, they um, give us the opportunity to move to more than um, 40 semi fast uh, uh, recharging point and at the end we not only have 200 uh, recharging columns for public utility but also let me underline this point 90 available just for municipality staff and this is something that is important to stress for two reasons. One, the first one is that uh, the municipality itself get the right example, uh, moving thanks to the um, e-vehicles. And the second one, uh, the municipality has uh, its own recharging columns, not just because they want to have something separated, but to give the opportunity to all the other people to have 200 services just for the public. And this is something that is uh, quite important to give the evidence that uh, uh, e-mobility is something that is going on. The analysis of the data in the last uh, three years that has been reinforced in thanks to replicate project about the use of e-mobility in Florida, even to understand if it was the right path to go further on uh, the development and the reinforcement of uh, the um, recharging columns show us and uh, uh, that is still needed now more because uh, it's a different the market but it's also different awareness of uh, people regarding this topic that this we have to go further and move to more different opportunities that's why just to make references to the sharing system uh, our new challenges it go also with e-bike uh, just to have a new opportunity to move in the city with uh, 
um, sustainable uh, region. And this is something that is connected also to the um, adoption, let me say, by the municipality of Florence of the pathway to sustainable development thanks to the sustainable development goals. And uh, we know that two of them are related to the sustainable cities, but also communities and also to a sustainable mobility. That's Thank you very much. Time. Thank you very much. Very interesting. That it's very clear uh, after he and you that the whole market and the whole system of electric vehicles is making Florence, I, I would say, the Italian electric uh, city, or at least the capital, the Italian capital city of e-mobility. And I think that the connection with the SDGs, with the Sustainable Development Goals, I think is very clear on how the whole strategy is not just actions. You are trying to, uh, as I said before, trying to connect and trying to blend the sustainability strategy also with the smart city strategy as we can say that we are seeing some similarities in, in, in other cases in, in, uh, in Replicate. For example, Essen was exactly uh, achieving the same kind of thing. So we are, we are building a common ground among uh, Replicate uh, cities. So thank you for your very interesting uh, presentation on the two uh, perspectives of a sustainability and a, a smart city. Um, any question from the audience? I can see that there is uh, the audience is still there. So um, any any question, any comment from? Hello, this is Esra from Demir Energy. Uh, Hello, hi, Esra. Hi, hi, Esra. Welcome. Uh, uh, please, we, we, know, we know you, but maybe there are people that, that don't know you. So please, uh, could you introduce yourself? I'm from Demir Energy, representing Nilufar Municipality. Okay, from Turkey, it's Nilufar. From okay. Turkey, yes. I was wondering about the procurement processes for the uh, HR stations. I'm guessing as a city, you had to go to some tendering uh, processes. How was it handled? Uh, could, did you manage to give the tenders to deserving companies? Or sometimes uh, in Turkey, we always have this problem. You have to choose the cheaper uh, bid, and then you get up. Uh, you end up with uh, very poor uh, work from the const constructor or the. Uh, so this is my first question and my second uh, question is the free recharging you have provided free recharging for e-vehicles did you get any discount from the service provider or any kind of support from any other public institutions did you pay it as a municipality yourself thank you thank, thank you very much Ezra. good questions yeah, regarding the first question, uh, let me say that as municipality, everything has been made in with the public tender. What is really needed when you're making this public tender is to be uh, real focusing on specification of te on technical specification in order to achieve the best result for the city and allow people to have a, a correct competition in giving the uh, offers. The the second one, also the refurbishment of the electricity was under a public tender. It was clear from the beginning that was a sort of, um, um, let me say, um, a word rewarded for people that was uh, buying uh, in eBay. Because so the offer was uh, quite convenient, uh, even because there was uh, two factors at the time. The first was uh, that it was uh, not uh, really used uh, by private uh, the e vehicles, uh, and uh, the second one. Uh, so of course the amount that has been paid uh, for the municipality was especially for the first uh, one year and a half uh, not very high to pay through. And the second one was that also the distributors was were very interested to take part uh, to this um, activity because it was also for them an opportunity to let me say sell a product so it was a very perfect combination uh, between uh, public and private sectors but still it was uh, a public tender okay um 
Thank you very much, Ezra from Nilufer, Turkey, our follower, fellow city in Replicate. Any other question um, before we are moving on the third and the last um, slot on platform, on the Smart City platform? I can see people from Bristol as well um, have joined the session. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the last uh, third um, slot on the smart city platform. Uh, before we are going to start with this um, with this slot, I think it's clear that the whole the, the first two slots are generating a lot of data. And that is why I think that we, I remember when we were in Florence, I, I think that it was a couple of years ago, when we saw, let's say, the beginning of the platform, or at least it was the, the how Florence was developing the platform with the screen and the dashboard and so on and so forth. So I, I guess that we are going to uh, see the advancement on, on the smart city platform in, in Florence, please, uh, and the control room as well. So please go ahead. Uh, we have Chiara Lorenzini. Um, who is the IT and EU projects um, responsible at the city of, of Florence. Please go ahead when you want. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's Chiara speaking. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, Replicate Smart City platform, but I would like also to focus on how through the uh, city platform and the, the other outcomes of the Replicate projects, the, uh, the city of Florence, since the beginning of the project, started to um, to design and to develop the, the, the city control room, which is now one of the uh, lead projects for the city, and probably one of the most innovative, from uh, both from a technical but also from an organizational point of view. And, and I'm going to it uh, in, a, in a minute. Just a short introduction to say that uh, the replicate project in Florence is inserted in a formal collaboration framework among the municipality, the Tuscan region, and the University of Florence, and all the public utilities that operate in Florence. And uh, it's, the control room project is just the tip of this collaboration process, uh, which uh, comes out from a participation process with the main city public service providers and maintainers. Uh, let's recall uh, very briefly the uh, overall infrastructure of the Smart City platform. Uh, the Replicate Florence Smart City ICT pilot is a complex ecosystem of data platforms, IoT systems, smart mobility, smart energy, as, prob as probably most of you already know, and uh, also web and mobile, app mobile applications. On the left hand side of the picture, you see all the data sources systems and um, from, from the systems, uh, the systems feeds the smart city platforms and the smart city platform through the smart city APIs offers data to the application on the left hand side, which are mainly web and mobile, and mobile application for users, but also the dashboards that we will uh, see later, um, uh, whose beneficiaries are the, the policy uh, makers. Uh, of course, this, the city platform add value to uh, data coming from the subsystems uh, through uh, predictive algorithms, data mining process, uh, data enrichment process, and uh, um, enriching the quality of data in general. Uh, just a, a little bit in detail, the data sets, uh, this list is, is not, uh, of course, exhaustive, but we have data from uh, traffic from traffic data measurement stations, uh, from smart benches, uh, but also from local police activities, weather sensor, but also from registration office data, for instance, which is a typical data from, uh, I mean, data from a typical municipality and. Uh, uh, as for the users, of course, we have the citizen, um, especially for the mobile and web application, but also the control room operators and the head of departments and the city general manager, of course, and the city mayor, who, who the, the last three are, the, of course, the decision makers. 
Uh, here we have a, a simplified a schema um, of the uh, platform in some way. At the bottom you have the, the, the system we have seen before. And I put in evidence the intelligent transport systems and the traffic supervisor we have in Florence because probably is one of the uh, most mat mature uh, system that we have and the, the most um, rich in, in terms of data that are offered to the data, ag data aggregation platform. And I'll try to, um, to show, to explain how from a very high level of detail, um, for instance, of, uh, of the traffic supervisor, we go through the data aggregation plat platform to very summary da um, data displayed on the policymaking dashboards and the control room. Uh, dashboards. Just a very quick view on the interfaces offered by the, the um, uh, traffic supervisor. You see here the parking manager who, who displays um, very detailed data on the entrances and, and ex exits from the parking and the rate of occupancy. Uh, the traffic flow manager who is able to reconstruct the uh, vehicles fluxes uh, flows all over the road network on the basis of, of uh, measurement at the uh, stations that we have, uh, of course, through quite complex um, traffic modeling. And also you see uh, probably it's, it's a little bit um, small, but in the picture you see also the traffic lights, the, the traffic um, supervisor is able to change the, the green-red traffic light according to eventual um, congestion um, detected uh, all over the somewhere in the in the road network. Um, to, to finish with the, the public transport manager, where you can uh, in real time see the exact position of buses. So this is a system, of course, that treats data with a very high level of detail. Uh, going to uh, the, the dashboards. Um, the, the University of Florence, together with the municipality, uh, developed, developed these uh, two levels of dashboard, let's say. Uh, the first level is uh, made of um, dashboard that display uh, very easy to read uh, data with a very simple gra graphic, very simple maps, very poor interaction between the, the user and the dashboard and, and summary parameters. And um, the beneficiary of, of this kind of application are mayors, heads of department, in general, non-technical technical staff. Um, while the second level of dashboard that we have uh, develop, developed are um, mm, dedicated to heads of department, heads of unit, and technicians who have a, a, quite a big knowledge of the topic. And they, they are, uh, by the way, um, thematic dashboard. Uh, just one area of policies is treated in this kind of dashboards. Uh, graphs and diagrams are a little more complex, and the, the widgets are interactive, and, and so on. Ju um, I will give some uh, few examples of uh, the dashboard we are using in the city. This actually is the dashboard that the mayor is using to monitor the city. And you see here many widgets uh, where different many very different parameters are displayed. And coming back to the mobility area on the bottom left, left you see how the, uh, the, the some of the mobility data have been summarized in these uh, widgets. Uh, for instance, here we decided to show in real time the numbers of vehicles that are entering and exiting the city. Uh, so in this case, the data aggregation platform have, has been configured to sum up a subset of uh, measuring uh, station data on a belt around the city so that we have the idea of what's going on, on in terms of vehicles that are entering and using the city. You see that the morning peak and the, and the evening peak 
uh, by the way. Uh, many other dates are displayed, for instance, uh, I was mentioning before the registration office uh, data, which is not very dynamic, but uh, it displays, as you can see, the uh, newborn, uh, dead people, weddings in the last uh, seven, seven days. But also, of course, we have here in green the um, meteorological uh, alerts, alerts uh, hydraulic risk, uh, storm risk, and snow risk, and so on, but also the per percentage of active and in-use uh, recharging uh, stations, and the occupancy of, of parking, and so and so on. <clears throat> this is again level level one, but it, it's the map view of the parameters that, that we have seen before. Going to the second level. This is one of the thematic dashboard uh, focusing on uh, mobility. You see here maps, uh, trends, diagrams, uh, interactive widgets. For instance, here you, you, you can click and have the, the next arrival at the bus stops for each line of the public transport and so on. So this is dedicated to um, technicians in general. Here you see a, a game in more detail of the uh, traffic flow monitoring uh, dashboard. Um, and another, another thematic dashboard for, um, that deals with an environmental uh, parameters. Um, so uh, going to the uh, control room dashboards, I would like to make a little short, introduc short introduction on how we imagine and how we are designing our control room. Uh, we like using the metaphor of an orchestra because city services management is a typical multi-operator activity. So each player uh, must uh, play the, the same music sheet and keep the beat. And uh, of course, the, the conductor must be the, the Florence municipality. And here you see uh, a schema of how we are planning to uh, organize the, our physical control room. You see here the uh, control room dashboard is a synoptic view of the city uh, that each of the operators inside the control room uh, can uh, see. So everybody inside the room has the same view of, of what, what's going on in the city. At the same time, each of the operator has the, uh, op the, post the, the can um, con uh, be in contact to his reference center, eventually uh, interact directly to his reference center, but also uh, using his uh, internal management system, eventually through a VPN connection. So when something happens, uh, the, a single operator that can be the public transport uh, manager or the water, um, the water utility manager and so on, can check on his internal system what's, what's going on, on from his side, but at the same time interact with the other operators to solve problems timely and in a reliable way. Uh, so, uh, and this is of course both for ordinary management and unexpected events. Uh, so from a traditional operational mode, uh, where interaction between people is occasional, um, where um, operators treat many topics not focusing on real-time city management, and each operator has a partial knowledge of complex uh, topics, and he cannot access data to a system used by other actors. We are moving towards a new uh, approach, a new operational mode uh, with a collaborative workspace separated and independent from the operator's headquarters 
to have a real-time synoptic view of the shared information, um, a continuous focus on real-time management and uh, cooperative working to reach a common goal. Um, of course, one of the tasks of the control room is communication to, uh, to citizens. Uh, only from the control room, the, the, the reliable information can be uh, create, created and uh, broadcasted uh, through the, the, the channels that the municipality uh, uses. Uh, we are planning to, to, to have a, a radio corner and a communication corner inside the control room to uh, eventually edit uh, the information that comes from the, the control room and deliver, deliver it to the, to the citizen in a reliable way uh, and uh, in time. Um, the applications that, uh, of course, the, the communication goes also through um, mobile application. We are thinking to apps even more similar to similar to social networks, so that we can create a community of users and to give notification, uh, to have notification from the citizen and to be able to create tailor-made uh, messages to inform timely and, and in a reliable way our citizens. That's it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Chiara uh, Lorenzini uh, from the city of Florence, from the IT and EU projects uh, department. A uh, very comprehensive um, presentation on the structure and the details of the control room on the dashboard and the platform, the whole platform. The Smart City platform. Um, before I'm going to open the floor for any question on, on this, because I think it's a very broad uh, topic, I think that I should include something that uh, a topic that uh, has been including in the previous um, sessions of the city to city learning, because I think it's a deep debate at the moment in, in the EU, in many, many cities, uh, that is about the, how to comply with the GDPR. Uh, and I mean, I, I know that this is a big uh, topic and I'm not going to address any specific question, but I would say that, for instance, uh, when, when, when we are uh, saying in the, in the previous slide, not in the last one, the, just the, the last two slides, when uh, you have mentioned the, how to collect data from users, I think that the, at the moment there's a big discussion about um, not only collecting data, but also bringing back, bringing back the ownership of data to citizens. So I'm, I don't know if you, are, if you have already thought about this, but once that we are going to start using mobile apps, maybe the question should be already prepared because um, maybe citizens are going to start uh, requesting the, not just the private, the private, the privacy of, the, of, their, of their data, but also uh, the ownership of their data. I don't know if you have any thoughts uh, on that yeah uh, <clears throat> let me say that when we are um, working on data especially since the introduction of the um, indication of the gdpr we uh, started to and also say review i just want to say to enlarge uh, the view of the use of the data and of the publishing of the data we just had to underline two main questions. The first is that uh, there's some data information that are just used for the management of the city. So our data that have been shared from the owners uh, and the, uh, talking about owners and of course uh, talking not only of the utilities that are part on uh, this uh, service providing, but also of the private that are uh, doing the work for the municipality 
And this means that we have to work on the use of the quality of data, but also to the security of this data. And for that, together with Thales, we are right now analyzing the security of the platform, because it's something that we have to talk and to think about, to be sure that the data will not be stolen without any authorization of the um, platform, and let me say, of all the people that are working on the platform respectful to the property of the data. In the second case that you're talking about the data that are providing from the community of people, we, um, what we are doing now is to organize the way that people are taking part of this community in order to be sure that the information and the data that are coming from people taking from private, let me say from users, of the um, app and they want to be a um, part of the community they are aware to be part of community they are aware about the information that are going to be released inside this community but as we say that these communities this is not something open that everyone can see but people that are inside this app and that have been deciding and subscribing to take part of this community the second one is not just the respectable respectfulness of the ownership of the data information that are provided to our private, but also is very um, referring to the um, credibility of the data. So this is something that has to be matched together. It's not a question of ownership, but it's also a question related to the quality of the data and the Mm, contents of the data. So it's something that we are approaching, we can say, um, at, uh, at, at the best, but at, with a complete view. And this is something that has been reinforced uh, with the need to be in compliance with the, the GDPR. Uh, regarding to the HAP, we have been um, making a public tender um, to be true, Giuseppe Caroni is also the one that is responsible for this public tender because, uh, and I want to underline this, because uh, it's something that is all connected. It's not just a, a seal of souls in the organization of our tender, but it's also because we are trying to have a sort of overlook of the total vision of e-mobility, where um, the uh, infrastructure is really talking with the immaterial and the innovativeness of the system. So we are putting together the, the smart city control room, the dashboard, the information that are provided from public and private. So it's something that is in compliance with the GDPR. And of course, it's something that we are scaling up. I mean, so something has been uh, uh, under analy analysis uh, just because it's uh, around one year that GDPR is uh, having an effect on it. So of course, we are uh, updating all the things that have been done in the last uh, three years, so let me say. Thank you, Alessandra. Very comp comprehensive answer as well. And, and it's very clear that you are preparing uh, the key questions to face the challenges of data uh, management, data ownership, data security, and so on and so forth. Um, thank you very much. Uh, any question uh, from the audience? Because we are almost uh, finishing the third session of City to City Learning led by uh, Florence. Um, There is a quiet, a silence. It's lunchtime, Igor. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I, not here, but yes, in Italy and Spain, not in the UK at least, um, in Turkey as well. Well, um, any question? No. Okay, so let's wrap up the session led by Florence. Thank you very much, uh, Alessandra Barbieri, um, and also Giuseppe Carone, uh, Valerio Moscarini, Stefano Riva, and, and the last speaker, Chiara uh, Lorenzini. Um, the session was uh, entitled Go Fast, Go Green, Get Connected, That's Smart. I think that we got, um, um, let's say, a um, very deep overview of how Florence, apart from the pilot, because I think one thing is the implementation itself, another thing is the reflection just after the implementation that um, the, the cities, uh, particularly the lighthouse cities, 
are uh, are implementing. So for the first uh, slot, the e-charging system, we have seen the public-private um, uh, partnership uh, among uh, e-distribuzione um, and the and the municipality of Florence uh, with the with the smart grid, and it was uh, a good a good discussion at the end of of the of the slot about how a blockchain could just improve or help and it was very connected i know with the with the whole debate on data uh, and and how to connect data with citizens as we have seen so everything is very very connected it was very uh, interesting uh, slot about the the e taxi and the fast uh, recharging system then we have moved on uh, to the second slot that it was about um, the 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 e mobility and uh, the sustainable strategy of um, of florence uh, even uh, having a position of being the immobility e uh, Italian uh, capital uh, city and and uh, addressing the sustainable development goals as we have seen and the last uh, slot uh, we have just wrap up with the ICT with how data should be governed and is governing and is structuring uh, to the control room dashboard and platform uh, we ended up uh, uh, with a discussion about the GDPR, uh, how to comply with the GDPR, uh, and also an open question, the one question that we maybe don't have already the answer, but we should be very aware of of, of that. Um, I can see um, that there are some comments on the on the chat. You can read them. So uh, please, um, this is the third session. The la the next one is going to be run and led by Lausanne in Switzerland mainly about district heating um, uh, and it's going to be on the on the 9th of, of July so please stay tuned uh, share your comments uh, you wish um, by city to city learning uh, hashtag or replicate EU um, from my side from the University of Oxford in England here uh, thank you very much for your contribution and uh, keep in touch stay tuned thank you bye bye Thank you, Igor. Just one word so to thank all the Italian consortium that are uh, being with us together. Besides the one that being the speaker, the result of the pilot, it's uh, a real uh, result of all the consortium matters. So no presentation would be available if not the effort of all the uh, consortium has been uh, done inside. Thank you very much. A collective achievement, then. <laughs>